Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if this is your first time watching. My name is Haley and this is my channel Halo Beauty. I make all different kinds of videos from hair and makeup to fashion videos as well as cooking and homemaking videos. So if you are not yet subscribed to my channel, I would absolutely love if you would subscribe. You can go ahead and click the subscribe button below so you can get alerts whenever I post a new video. And I'm actually really excited because I recently just hit 10,000 subscribers. So I'm I'm going to be doing a huge 10,000 subscriber giveaway so make sure that you're subscribed so when I post that video later on this week you guys get alerts and know how to enter my giveaway. So I'm really excited for today's video because it's actually going to be a collab with my good friend Paige Danielle here on YouTube. I absolutely love Paige and I love her channel. If you've not checked her out yet I will have her link in the bottom bar below as well as put a little clip over here of the video that she's going to be doing. This is going to be a two-part video. Paige is going to be doing a couple awesome drink ideas for you guys and I'm going to be giving you guys some awesome snack ideas to kind of go with what she's going with. I thought this was an awesome idea and I'm really excited that Paige and I got to meet. She's become one of my really good friends from YouTube and her channel is just awesome. She makes really great cleaning and organizing videos and all different kinds of hauls, cooking videos and just everything that you would like if you're coming from my channel. So make sure that you go check Paige out and don't forget to subscribe to her as well as watching her second part to this video. So if you guys are interested and seeing some of my summer snack ideas to go with Paige's summer drinks. Keep on watching. The first thing I'm going to be making are these lemon poppy seed muffins. Now yes, I know this is a box mix, but I have a secret to make them taste totally homemade. And that is to add a half a cup of finely diced up strawberries and also a half a cup of fresh blueberries. When I made the muffin mix, I just followed the directions on the box, which is to add two eggs, a quarter cup of canola oil, as well as three quarters of a cup of water. And then I went ahead and added the powder lemon poppy seed mix. And then I did whisk that all together, but when it comes to adding the fruit, you kind of want to use a more gentle piece of equipment. So I'm going to use a spatula and then I'm just going to gently fold the fresh fruit into the batter before I throw it into my muffin tins. A really good secret is to pour your batter into something that makes it a little bit easier to pour the batter into each individual muffin tin. So I'm just using a large measuring cup that has a little pour spout and then I am filling up all of my little muffin tins with the strawberry, blueberry, and lemon poppy seed mixture. And then I will go ahead and put these in a preheated 425 degree oven for about 15 minutes or until they're nice and golden brown and super yummy. So while the muffins are still warm, I'm just going to drizzle them with a little bit of the lemon glaze that came in this mix. And then I'll just take a knife to make sure it's all nice and smooth along the top. And then I'm going to grab a big cup of coffee. I love this one that I just picked up the other day. And I'm going to sit outside and enjoy my muffin and this beautiful summer day. So when Paige told me she was making an ocean water, I knew I had to make this snack mix for you guys. It's a super easy snack mix that I eat pretty much all the time. It's really easy. It's just a bag of oyster crackers, a bag of goldfish, as well as some olive oil, garlic powder, and some ranch dressing powder. And all you do pretty much is fill a measuring cup up with some olive oil or you can use canola oil, whatever you have. And then put the whole bag of goldfish as well as a whole bag of oyster crackers in a large bowl. And then just give it all a really good stir before you pour your oil on top of it. And then once you give that all a toss, making sure that the oil is coated on all of the pieces, you're going to add all of your seasonings. I happen to have a large jar of this ranch dressing mix, so I use three tablespoons of it for this recipe. But if you're at the grocery store and you can only find the small packets, just get one of those. It's the same amount as three tablespoons. And then I'm also going to add just one teaspoon of garlic powder. And then all you're going to do is just stir this all around, make sure that everything is nice and coated, and then grab a baking sheet lined with some foil and pour your snack mixture onto it. And then I just like to give the sheet tray a little shake to make sure that everything is in a nice even layer. And then you're gonna put this in a 325 degree oven for about 15 minutes, stir it, and then put it in for another 15 minutes after that. 
While my snack mix is in the oven, I'm gonna show you guys how to make these super adorable fruit firework pops. And these are honestly such a hit whenever I have parties, especially with the little kids, and they're super easy to make. All you need is a watermelon, and just go ahead and cut the one end off of it. And then you're gonna wanna take about a one to one and a half inch slice of watermelon. You don't want it to be any thicker than what your cookie cutter can cut through. So just cut a couple of slices, depending on how many of these you want to make and then you'll end up with these one and a half inch discs of watermelon and then I just like to put the other side of watermelon to the side and then I'm gonna take my little star cookie cutter here that I got from the Target dollar section this was seriously 25 cents you guys you can find these anywhere but pretty much what you're gonna do is just use your cookie cutter to press out star shapes from this watermelon and these pop out pretty easily so just keep doing it over and over until you You've got as many stars as your little heart desires. Once I have all of my watermelon stars cut out, I'm just going to dump a handful of washed blueberries onto my cutting board. I'm gonna be using these skewers as the handles for my fruit kebabs, and make sure that you have enough room for people to grab these. You don't want fruit to go all the way to the bottom, so just make sure you leave enough room, and then it's very simple. It's obviously just putting blueberries on, and then one piece of watermelon for the star on the top of the firecracker. These are really, really cute, and they're always a huge hit in my house, especially just because they're really easy, and honestly, they're even better than next day frozen. So now that my snack mix is done, I'm going to head outside and enjoy my little fruit firecrackers and my super yummy ranch snack mix. My last recipe of the day is my favorite bruschetta recipe of all time. All you're going to need for this is a pint of cherry tomatoes, some organic fresh basil, you're also going to need four cloves of garlic, one shallot, a little bunch of green onions, we're not going to use all of them but we're going to use about half, and then half of a lemon as well as the zest, and then I'm also going to be using this balsamic glaze, this is pretty much just reduced balsamic vinegar. You're also going to need some salt and pepper as always, as well as some sun-dried tomatoes. And then we're actually going to be grilling the bread that we're using for our bruschetta. So for that, you're just going to need some Italian bread and some butter and some garlic powder. So that's all you need. Now I'm going to show you how I whip it up. It's really easy. Just go ahead and dice up all of your tomatoes. I like to cut mine in half and then in half again so they're in little squares. And then I just like to throw all of my vegetables once they're diced up into the bowl and let it mix all together. Let all the flavors meld and the longer this stuff sits, honestly the better that it gets so get all of your tomatoes chopped up and put them in a bowl and then next thing that we're going to be doing is smashing our garlic cloves now it's really easy to get the peel off the garlic if you gently smash it with the back of your knife as you can see it peels off really easily so just do that with all four cloves and then give them a really fine slice and then give them a run through with your knife so they become really really chopped and then what we're gonna do is put them in a saute pan on the stove with a little bit of olive oil and then just kind of cook them for a minute or two you don't really want this to get dark you just kind of want a little bit of color on it and to also cook out that really strong raw garlic flavor now for the shallot I'm just going ahead and cut the end off but leave the root of this intact and then I peeled it and as you can see with my knife what I'm doing is getting super close to the root of the shallot but leaving that end intact this really helps if you're not good at cutting onions like I am. It just helps to keep it all together and it's a lot easier to dice. So then I'm going to add my shallots into the bowl. And then with my basil, I'm using about 15 fresh leaves, but you can use more or less depending on how much you like basil. And what I'm gonna do is stack them on top of each other and then just tuck the ends under and give it a roll. And then you're just going to run your knife through this basil to chiffonade it and then kind of give it a fine dice so you have ribbons that are still a manageable bite. 
And then I went ahead and cut this whole green onion up. I'm not gonna be using this whole thing for this recipe, but I will save the rest of this diced green onion in my fridge for another time. So I'll throw about half of that green onion in there and then go through my sun-dried tomatoes and give those all a really nice julienne. And then I will chop them nice and fine and toss them into the rest of that mixture as well. Now I'm adding the garlic that I browned in my saute pan as well as zesting my half of a lemon and then I'm also going to be squeezing the juice from this half a lemon in too and I'm using my fingers to make sure that the seeds don't go into the mixture and then give yourself a nice healthy drizzle of olive oil as well as a good pinch of salt and pepper. And then I'm gonna go through with that balsamic glaze and give this a really good hit with the balsamic. And then once you give this an all a stir, I just like to throw a sheet of plastic wrap on this and let it sit in the fridge for at least a half an hour. But honestly, like I said before, the longer that you let this stuff sit, the better it gets. But make sure that you let it chill out for a little bit while we get our bread prepped. Now I'm just going to turn my loaf of bread onto the side so it's nice and easy to cut with my serrated knife. I'm not going to be using all of this bread today but again I'm going to cut the rest of it up and then just keep it all nice and fresh in a Ziploc bag. This way when I come back to grab my bruschetta later my bread is already cut up and ready to go. And then in the microwave I just melted a couple tablespoons of butter and then to that I'm adding just a little pinch of garlic powder and then stirling that all around with my brush. Now my bruschetta has been sitting at this point for probably about an hour. I gave it a taste for salt and pepper and it also needed a little bit more balsamic so just do it with the taste that you like. If you want more salt or less salt, you know, do it however you like. And once I have my bruschetta to where I like it, I'm going to prepare my bread to grill. So I'm just using a little pastry brush and brushing the tops of each one of these little pieces of bread and then hitting them with some salt and pepper and then I'm going to be throwing them on the grill but I'm going to be doing it butter side up first so that way the butter has a chance to kind of seep into the bread and make the bruschetta toast really really flaky and flavorful and then once those have about a minute or two on the grill they don't take very long you can go ahead and flip them so that the butter side is down and then I'm bringing out my bruschetta to eat outside with some friends so I'm going to go ahead and put it in a really nice platter and then just for some garnish I'm using a little bit more of that balsamic glaze and then finishing it off with some bread around the edges. I hope you guys enjoy these videos and have a great summer. Alright you guys, so that is it for today's video. I really hope that you guys learned a couple new snack ideas. Make sure that you go check out Paige's channel so you can see her video on all the drinks that she's doing that will go really well with all of these things that I made today. Go ahead and subscribe if you liked what you saw. Give me a thumbs up as well as following me on Instagram at HaloBeautyYT. I will have all of my handles and links down below. And as always, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.